Good morning from day two here in Copenhagen and uh, we kind of have a late start this morning because we kind of missed the sunrise, check this out. But that's not too bad because these tones are pretty weak in my opinion. And right now we're standing at a bus stop, just here, waiting for the bus. And we're going to head into central Copenhagen of course, where all the action is and all the beautiful buildings are. And we've got a packed agenda again today, we've got some awesome architectural locations we want to check out, as well as just generally exploring. It could be a bit spontaneous as well, right? It's good to have a sense of direction, a few targets you want to hit, but then at the same time, you should be open to uh, ex experiencing the beauty and seeing something you didn't plan for, which is all the fun as well. So, um, hope this bus arrives at the same time soon. And by the time we're in the center of town, well, no, that's not us. Just check the number. <laughs> Don't want to miss the bus. Right. Without further ado, let's head over here and make this happen. private residence and uh, the caretaker security guard did catch me so saw me with the camera and he said what are you doing here and said well you have to leave and he walked me all the way out the building so that's why I'm st stood outside right now but I think I did get a few shots that I'm really happy with the interior is just crazy cool with that spiral and all the staircases um, various locations look pretty cool that's actually what Copenhagen is very known for it's very much of a design city and there's a lot of modern architecture going on this whole district in fact looks pretty beautiful not just this building but let's take a look around we've got a lot of um, Old meets new over here, and even the offices all around. More apartments here. Everything's modern, a lot of glass, a lot of uh, organic lines, a lot of curvature, uh, floor to roof ceilings. Really, really beautiful area of town. So it's cool to be exploring here anyway. And at the end of the day, I don't mind getting kicked out if it means I got a few shots in there anyway. So as long as you're polite and just leave and respect it, then I think you're good. If you don't risk anything, you don't win anything. So that very much holds true and can be applied to a lot of areas, not just photography, but just don't be stupid about it. Um, ben is actually still inside. I didn't give him away. I just walked out myself. So I'm kind of waiting for him right now. And um, yeah, while he's busy up there, I might just explore the area. Let's go do that for a little bit. A few moments later. Took the train and we're right on the other side of town. And what's happening next? Gonna get the drone. The drone, it's drone time. It's gonna be dr dr drone. Drone. Drone time. <laughs> drone. Drone. Because there's actually a castle right here. It's looking pretty epic. And the great thing about this is this is how we did the location scouting for this one. Instead of just uh, scouring Instagram and trying to find other people's photos and then replicating them, we actually got a little bit original for a change. And I actually found this place on Google Maps. Ooh. Oh. Wow, that's overexposed. Here we go. I'm back. Um, yeah, I went on Google Maps Jeez. and I was just looking across um, Google Maps, scrolling around Copenhagen to see what would be a cool texture. And I found this star shaped castle with a cool moat of water running all around it. So I thought it would be the perfect drone shot. Unfortunately, I don't drone myself, but uh, I do. I'm in good company of the pilot himself. There we go. Pilot Moore. That's good. So Feeling... we have a safe flight. Yeah, you ready? For you got your pre flight briefing? <laughs> pre flight checks are made. Yeah. Emergency exit. Ready to go. On the right, yeah. Ready to go. Boarding pass. Got your boarding pass? Yeah. Because we're sure. going to get airborne. Let's go do this.
right now I'm in the park uh, surrounding the castle and you can see the moat clearly behind me. Here's the water and that's the wall and this forms one of the um, stars. What would you call it? One of the arms of a star? One of the... whatever it's called. This is part of a star. Also loving this flare right now. How cool is that? I decided to walk it right into the castle, we were right in the middle of it. And something that was really cool has caught my eye here. How oh, cool is this Danish architecture, by the way? So we got told off, by the way, because this is actually an active military base. I saw a lot of soldiers walking around, and Ben got reprimanded by one because he had his drone up in there, and they said, If you don't bring that down immediately, we're going to come shoot it down for you. So he decided to land in the end because he felt like it would be a good idea to keep his drone. But um, that being said, I'm on top of the moat now. Look at all this water here, how cool is this? Let me show you what really, really, really caught my eye. And that's this windmill back here. It's got a bit of a Dutch flavor, but I like it anyway. So we're gonna walk around, see if we can get a good composition. Combine it with some water, some foreground elements. Maybe get a little bit more of a dynamic shot. And then I can't wait to photograph this. Let's go. Random little side note, because we're on top of the wall here, look how steep this is. Look at this bank here, of the grass. It's really, really difficult to uh, maintain. And they got a really ingenious solution as to how, to how they get the lawnmower down here. This is crazy. Check this out. So they got this tractor going on back here. And in front of the tractor, there's a winch. And he's pulling up a lawnmower the up and down the bank to cut the grass. I mean, that's crazy ingenious. I've never seen something like this, but it's kind of cool. I think so anyway. So because this is a photography vlog, let's focus on that. And we've walked around the side of the windmill. And I think this is the kind of shot I want to go for. I want to frame this windmill in with the trees on either side to create a good framing. And then in the foreground, we've got this cannon here, which I want to keep in shot as well. Just to add a bit of a 3D effect and add a foreground and a background, and that could work really well. So with that being said, obviously I'm going to go for the wide angle, I think. It's the only sensible solution in this case. So right now I'm using the 18mm prime lens, which helps me a lot because I'm able to frame in, like I said, the cannon as well as the windmill. And another thing I wanted to show, point out to you guys is that I'm using F16 because I really want to work with a very deep depth of field. I'm hoping of F16 I should get the cannon in focus as well as the full uh, windmill because the windmill is obviously a different distance to the camera than the cannon. So you could either focus stack it by focusing on this and on the windmill separately and then combining them in Photoshop. But I think I don't need to do that if I use a very tight aperture, which is also why I'm using a tripod right now. A, to get the level perfect on the um, camera, but also because the F16 requires a much lower shutter speed. So that being said, let's check out the final shot. Few inches later. Once more, we're on the other side of town, and this time we're in a tower that has a slope running all the way to the top. Check this out. So we're walking up the slope, and hopefully at the top of this tower, at the top of a church actually, should be an amazing view over all of Copenhagen. That's the plan anyway, so let's keep hiking. Pretty tizzy after all that running up. But check out this preliminary view. Pretty good. I think we're onto a window already, so can't wait to reach all the way to the top end. Should be good, should be good. Top and there's this huge railing in front. So we'll have to shoot like this. But there's another protective fence. So, so should we use this fence here as um extra like foreground element or do you wanna like use a longer focal length and look past it? There's no shot here for me. It's like I'm shooting straight into the, um, the kind of horizon and it's, there's no, I want uh, some foreground element for the picture. Um, so you're giving up or you're not even going to try? I'm going to try something but it's trial and error, surely trial and error. On a slightly more, on a slightly more enthusiastic note, I am going to try. So <laughs> I'm going to use a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, which gives me a lot of versatility. Maybe I can pick out some details in the telephoto range, close to 105 millimeters. Maybe I can go all the way back to 24 millimeters and use this uh, balcony as a foreground element, just to give you perspective and a sense of you yourself standing on the viewing platform. Another thing I want to point out is it's midday sun now, and it's pretty bright and. Uh, 
harsh light coming in from the side. So what I'm thinking maybe is to use a polarizer just to clean up uh, all the glare and stuff coming off the buildings. It makes for a much cleaner, crisper shot. And well, I'm only going to give it my best shot, and then we'll look at the results after. I think that's the right attitude. What do you think, Ben? Attitude-wise, good. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Two hours later. Our journey of random discovery continues and we've made our way into yet another classic building. Well, let me show you guys what's so special about this. I planned this to say random. Okay, this is not random. Ben has planned this. Sorry, uh, plot spoiler by Ben. We planned this. But here we are regardless, and that's what matters. Let me show you what it's all about. Ben, tell us a bit more about this non-random building. When was it built? What is the architect? Um, when was it erected? Who, who laid the... Who blessed the building? Who put the first stone? So Ben is really obsessed with this view, of course, as you can tell. The enthusiasm is literally flowing out of him, but I'll show you why he liked it so much. Check here. What an awesome spiral staircase vibe. Not sure how to describe that, the spiral staircase or something like that, but it does look pretty cool. What caught my eye, however, is this awesome uh, old school elevator. Look, it doesn't even like stop for you and you have to get on and off. It's like a continuous track that keeps moving. So I'm 100% hopping on here and can't wait to ride this. Check this out. So you kind of just got to stand here, wait your turn. The cabin comes up, you jump in and then off you go. Check this out. So now we're heading up to another floor. How cool is this? I'm going to switch to the front camera. You have to see this. So here we go. Stepping out. Oh, that's awkward. Because it never stops, of course. It's a little bit of an awkward ride, but kind of awesome nonetheless. For all that excitement from the staircase behind us, uh, it's sunset now. We decided to return to the exact same spot as we went to in the last vlog yesterday evening, and that is this harbour again. And the reason we wanted to come back is because it's great to shoot the same sunset location twice because you can get different tones, no two sunsets are the same, and we might be able to pick out some compositions we didn't discover yesterday yet. So that's what tonight's all about. I'm gonna try some alternative angles and just do some scouting and see if there's something cool along the way that we can capture that we didn't get around to yesterday. Right now I'm sat here on the edge of the harbour, check this out, behind this Christmas market actually and I found a really cool composition. I've got to show this to you guys. Here's a Danish flag which of course I love always photographing. Every time I see Union Jack and London I'm all about that. And then water is also always my style and then these classic buildings form the perfect backdrop. It's great harmony between the foreground element and then this classic background element of these buildings. And of course all the blue hour turns coming through because the sunset's kind of past now, check this out. That nice, beautiful, indirect light just hitting the buildings from the side. It's just very soft, very uh, moody, very harmonious. I'm really loving the atmosphere of this. So in order to photograph all this, I am using the 24-105mm lens, which I rarely use, but it comes in really great for traveling because it's just so versatile and so many things you can do with this. So nothing too fancy here. Just a handheld shot using the stabilizer, 1 30th of a second, focusing on this. And yeah, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Check it out. Okay, so we're done shooting the harbour, which is back there, and right now we're in the Christmas market in Copenhagen. And we're done shooting for today because Copenhagen's not so great to shoot at night, it's being quite dark and the building's not well illuminated. So this would ordinarily be the scene where I'd say, thanks for watching, goodbye, subscribe, etc. But I filmed that separately. Enjoy. Seriously can't get enough of this, this is so cool. Here comes the cabin. So, see you guys in a bit. Thanks for watching, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. 
See you in the next vlog. Subscribe, subscribe, like, comment, do all that.